Hello everyone, I am Bradley Swart, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. This video today is going to look at a homework example, which used to be an exam problem, which is, I, I don't have a real good name for it, but just a maze of map elements. It's kind of like a little puzzle. You guys probably already know all about it since you're uh, finished up with your homework and you're watching this video. So basically, it just comes down to the fact that I just ha I just have a file with a whole ton of stuff in it, and I already I already opened it, or I already included it in my project here. Uh, let's open it up. You can kind of see. And so the whole idea here is that there's a there's a bunch of pair of words, and and so you can guarantee there is an even number of words in this list. And every first word is the key, and then every second word is the value of a map element. So fobbed goes to relive, dictates goes to chit, sires to reversal, and so forth, and so forth, and so on. And so the goal here is, I guess the first goal would be to set up that map structure. So let me, let's just do that, and then we can describe the second part when we get there. Okay, so I definitely want to have a map, and it's going to have a string as the key and a string for the uh, for the value and it's just going to be the it's just going to be a map so I'll just call it M okay so that'll start out that uh, we need to open that file which I think I called words.txt this time around uh, so we need a input file stream we'll call it file and I will pass in this words.txt I know it's not necessarily called that, but to make it easier for me, I'm naming it that. Okay, and I can also do the if file.fail equals true. Then go ahead and take out this here and uh, exit with a one and just print out file didn't open. Okay, so let's try this out. Oops, do I not get access to exit through something? Nope, we're good. File didn't open. Okay, shoot. What did I call this thing now? Let's see if I... Yeah, let's... I'll take a second here and find it for you. Uh, turns out I did have it, it... I had it named this, but I had it in a different folder. I just copied it into here. And now when you run it, at least it doesn't say file didn't open. So it actually opened the file and did stuff because I can hit this part here in code now so yes my file is open so and again we're discussing that we, we're doing this two uh, two elements at a time two words at a time out of this thing and I can still do the while file dot eof equals false do something whoops come on there we go and then of course I'm gonna do a file dot close when this is all said and done the whole point of this is just to get everything from the file into a data structure in RAM and so what we can do is we can set up strings. I'll just call it A and B. And then we can go from the file and we can go into A and then we can go into B. And then we can go into our map, m.insert. Or we, I guess we, the easier way would, I think we can, can't we just do this? m of A equals B. So not, is it not going to be happy? Let's try that out and see what happens. Rebuild. M. Oh, I'm sorry about that. That's like, why can't it find M? Because I needed to put it up here. There we go. Let's try rebuilding this one more time. Okay, it succeeded. Let's see if it really did succeed. Let me put a breakpoint in here. Oops, too fast. Let's see. So it got there. So let's see. M is. 29,000 elements of fun here. Aaron goes to Bedlin, and this is all in alphabetical order, right? Remember this thing already sorts this, so let's see if we can find Aaron in here. And we can see Bedlin and comes right after it. So you can see in the zero, the first, this Aaron element goes to Bedlin, so you can see that uh, it seems to be working. We have all of the we have all of these in here from file into RAM, and now it's stuck in a map structure, key value pairs. So now we're ready to discuss part two of this. We can turn this map structure into something where we can actually get, figure out the one longest path through all of these uh, 
through all of these elements in this data structure and figure out the solution to the, the question of the puzzle. So remember, my rule of thumb is pretty much always, let's get it working first. Let's, let's get a solution out of this thing. And then we can talk about ways we can improve it. Or sometimes we just say, oh, thank God we got it done and just move on. I like just hopefully it won't come back to hurt me later on if I have to use this as part of something else, as part of a system or part of something I'm working on. Okay. So now the easiest way to go about this would just basically use a range-based for loop because again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a path through. There are only a certain number of uh, values in this in this uh, map that also are keys. So it's a matter of go from key value, find another value, and then go to key, and then go to key value, and then just keep on going until you can get the longest string. And so most of these do not have anything like that. So we're just going to it's just going to be a one one space dead end or one element dead end key value. You're not going to find it in there. So, but I can, what I can do for right now is say for every, and it's for every std string. And in this case, it should be a const reference I'm using a range based for loop for every string s and m. And this gives us, this actually gives us both the, the value. Oops, oops, I'm sorry. I have forgotten. Oops, minus one for Brad today. Yep, correct me if I'm wrong, which you should. For every every element of the map is actually a pair of string and string, right? This is why people love to use auto, and I don't fault you. I guess just seems like a seems cheesy to me, but at least on an, at an educational level, you can see what you're dealing with. Yes, you probably want to put auto in here because you know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get every element out of this map so you can work with it. And let me make sure I get this in, I got the syntax right. Okay, good. And I'm just going to, instead of being an S here, I'm going to call it P for pair now. So what I can do, just to show you that everything kind of is working for us, I can just go ahead and print P dot first and a space and then P dot second and then print an end line. So let's see what that does for us now. And you can see there are these are all our pairs, just like we were talking about earlier. This is everything. Let me go jump up all the way. Aaron goes to bed linen. So now we're printing out everything, which is OK. But what we really want to do is go through here and say, OK, can we continue? Can we continue? Can we continue? And maybe the answer will be yes, and maybe the answer will be no. Let's find out. All right, so here's the code that will get us almost all the way there here. So, or at least the solution is in the list here. So, as I was saying, for if you take every every element that's in the map, every key value pair, we're going to start from the key and see how far we can go. So, we need to maintain the phrase that we want to print out. That's we're going to we're going to keep the first element in there. And again, I don't know if I can change this up a little bit right now. I have it working. Every time I do this, I end up doing it slightly differently, and this is the way I ended up with it today. So I need to keep the, the I need to add to the phrase. So the whatever the first element or the key of the key value pair goes into the the phrase with a space, and then I I need to maintain the last word because when I get through with this loop, I'm going to be printing out all of the keys, but never really any of the values. You can see that when I you know I'm doing p dot first when I'm touching phrase, I'm doing next first when I'm talking about adding to the phrase and even here and so I'm never going to I'm never going to print out any of the the, the the values from the key value pairs and the only one I need to maintain is the final one because I'm gonna miss the final word if I don't maintain it if I print out all the keys and and never the final value I will never have the complete I'll never print out the complete phrase you know the, properly so I maintain that value. What is the what is p? And so it's p dot second. That is the value for this string p. And so now it's just a matter of just iterating through, like I was mentioning before, that this find function will say, oh, okay, give me the value from this current pair, and it'll say, oh, cool, okay, find it in here and tell me if it's in here. Tell me if it's a key. And if it finds it, it will return an iterator like to that location in the map. And if it won't find it, it will find it. It will return the end iterator. 
because that's how things work. End is always one past all the actual elements. So that's all we're doing here is just saying, okay, cool. Did you return an actual element, another element, yes or no? And if it was a no, we fall through. And again, we add that last value to the list and print it out. And so that's like 99% of everything we're going to see is just we can't even make it through that one time to go from key to value and then from value to another key. It just that first, that second link isn't there for like almost all of these things. But if it is, then we add to the phrase because now we have the next link, you know, add the next word to the, to the phrase and then maintain the last word just in case this is the last one. And then just do the same test again where you say try to find that value as a key in the map. And just keep going and going and going until you finally reach an end. And then add the last word and then print the thing out. So this will get us this far. I can just run it here. There we go. You can see everything going, and maybe you can see it as it goes real fast through. Maybe you can't, but there, the solution really is in there. So how about one way we can reduce this down? There's this, this is where, you know, you know, coming up with the solution is one, you know, there's one way to do it, but in another way, it's like, how do I just at least reduce the solution set down? And so what I can do here is I can just set up one more variable called pr uh, print. And I'll say, no, don't print. And in here, if we find at least one link, then we will print. And, and I'll say print equals true. And only when we get down here to print, I'll say if print equals true to do this. And we're like, what are you talking about? And you will see how instead of all of those printouts, we will only see a few of them. And the solution will be in there. And the solution will be pretty much readily apparent. And the reason for that is I eliminated all of the words that, again, that doesn't have uh, a key that's also a value. So in this case, there we go. And yes, this is very timely. You know, poor me, poor whatever, for not having a correct uh, problem for you guys to do. Because it's not going to be summer break right now for you guys watching this, most likely. Half, half of you, yes, half of you, no. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your summer break. Uh, winter break is coming up. But you can see whatever the longest phrase is, that's going to be the one that you want. You solved it. Way to go. Enjoy the rest of your summer break. Because like I told you guys when this problem first started that th th there's only one chain in the whole thing. There's not sub chains or anything crazy. It just made it relatively easy. So yes, if you start with the word you, you'll go you solved, solved, it, it, way, way, you know, blah, 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 all the way to summer, and then break, and then break does not have another key. So that's the end of the thing. So there is our solution. So from there, how, you know, what do you do? What, you know, like, how do you, how do you print out the final solution? And so something like this, you could print false or whatever. Or another thing you could do is uh, remember how many times this happened. So here, like just to say string, uh, std string, I'll call it longest, is just nothing, just empty. And um, we'll keep that. It's an empty string. So when I get down here, I can get rid of this bool print stuff. And, I, and right now I won't print anything. I'll get rid of all the printing whatsoever. And so what I can say here is if phrase dot length, I use size? I like size. If phrase dot size is greater than longest dot size, then I will make the longest string the current phrase. Okay, fair enough. And then when I get out of this final for loop, I will print out the longest phrase. And will that do it? Let's find out. There you go. There is your solution. You solved it. Way to go. Enjoy the rest of your summer, quote, winter, slash, whatever break. Whatever you're getting, enjoy it. Let me make this so you can finally see everything that I've written here for this part of everything. Yeah, you can, I can make it a little bigger. There we go. So there you go. There you have it. That's the code to make this work. Go through every string. Try to figure out the longest string of all of that that is generated by this and call it a day.
and not necessarily, if you were looking for words, again, if there were other linkages in here, you couldn't necessarily use this because maybe you just have a lot of big words that looks longer, but maybe it's only like five or six words as a, you know, that are long as opposed to maybe 10 or 11 words that are shorter. It all depends, right? It, it, I mean, you can't guarantee that this will work for everything. This, only guarantee, this is only guaranteed if there's only one path there's only one, there's one path and everything else are dead ends in this thing. Um, so there you have it. And so you could always write code, like if it, like if it's, if the string length is greater than a certain amount, then yeah, maybe you print it out or something, work your way toward it. And that's the fun, that, this is the fun of problem solving is to, not all, you don't always have, you don't always have to come up with a solution in a formal manner. Sometimes you're just looking like, you're just trying to come up with an answer you know, string together some runaway or runaway uh, one-time code, just throwaway code, and uh, then you don't have to worry about it. And you, you come back later and you go, "My God, that's horrible code!" But it worked. It got the job done. Uh, did what I needed to do. Anyway, so if if I mis misspoke about anything here in this video, if you have any questions or concerns, or if you just want to say hi, swordb at cod.edu is a great way of getting a hold of me. As is here on the YouTube channel. Uh, just comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can so uh, So this was I think a fun problem to solve like another way, you know, just basically just here's a puzzle go nuts on it and Enjoy your summer break um, So we have one more the Yahtzee problem If you haven't seen it already here. You will see it soon that now you roll five dice and using maps and, and uh, sets tell me what you actually have uh, instead of using, you know, whatever else, what other methodologies you would other, you know, otherwise use. Do it with a map and a set. So that's what's coming next. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys have a great week. hope you have a great, a great career, if this is your only video that you ever watch from me. And uh, I want you guys to take care. Please take care. And uh, we'll see you in another video, hopefully soon. Take care, buddy.